Suge Knight. You told me a story before behind the scenes about a female that Suge Knight was dating. If I'm not mistaken, I think her name was Madeline Woods and she worked for BET. If you don't mind, can you give me the backstory behind that? Okay, with that situation, we had all flew into Orlando. We were going in for the last Jack the Rapper that would ever exist was the Jack the Rapper con conference. And we were, they were having parties all over. So we were all in, so first of all, when we flew in, Jewel, my girl, with her weed smoking ass, decided she wanted to fly, fire up some weed on the airplane. So we on the airplane, the flight gets into Miami, and soon as the flight is about to hit the tarmac, the, they announced that the police will meet us at the gate for those of you that lit up on the flight. So now I was sitting next to this basketball player. What is his name? Anthony something. But I told him my nephew was sitting next to me. There was a little Caucasian girl sitting behind me. Joel was sitting on the other side of her on the other side of the aisle. And the little girl didn't know what to say. I told him, I said, look, me and me and my nephew, we walking with you because I, I don't even want to know when well, nobody even know that I'm with them because I'm not going to jail for what somebody else done done. So we get off the flight. We get to the hotel. Now, Madeline Wood's job was supposed to re make the reservations for everybody. The whole crew would have a room or whoever was doubling up, whatever. She was supposed to set that up. Did she set it up? No. Well, the ladies of Death Row Records, they got her down there in the driveway and they beat the crap out of her right there in, in the driveway of the hotel. Madeline was done. But see, Madeline was Suge's girl. And, and see, the thing with Suge, he had everybody thinking that he loved them. So we got Sharitha there. We got Madeline there, and not to mention a couple of other ones probably that were there. And Shug would just make sure everybody was okay. But he was so mad when he landed, he came straight to the hotel and he told him, everybody is going home. Because why did y'all do that? Bye, bye, bye. Y'all got me looking bad. But see, that he had me get cameras. Little Nikon point and shoot. You know what a point and shoot is, right? Yeah, yeah I know what that is. Yes, ma'am. So he had me get seven of those and give them to different people. So any beat downs that occurred would be caught on camera. That was one thing. This same conference, the show for Murder Was the Case wasn't showing until 2 a.m. in the morning. So... Once they got their sound check and everything together, people was gathering outside. You would have thought it was eight o'clock in the evening and everybody is just coming to a concert. They went to pushing them doors like they was coming up in there. Them guys would open the door, sock you and close the door. They did that at least three times. And I mean, they socked the hell out of them and shut the door. Who does that to your fans? Really? That's what you did? So not that I'm trying to tell on them, but I'm, I'm telling you these things so you'll know that what I'm saying to you from what happened to me is the truth. It was always something going on with when we would travel. We went to New York. We didn't have no incident at that at that particular uh, Radio City Music Hall, but they put me out because they told Suge no cameras on the floor. Suge like, I ain't thinking about what they talking about. So they put me off the floor. He was like, no, you're going to take pictures. So he took me in the back and he's like, OK, well, we're going to just take back pictures, back, back, backstage pictures. I mean, come on. Who could imagine Tony Bennett and Suge Knight sitting on uh, Tony Bennett and Snoop Dogg sitting down chatting for a minute? Really? That's Tony Bennett. He probably older than Snoop's great grandfather. 
but it is what it is. Suge had some good ass connections. He paid well too. It's just that he didn't want to take responsibility when, when something occurred. And that's what happened with me. Kim Hassan. Now this is what I was told. Kim Hassan should bought all of us a car. He bought Kim Hassan. No, he bought Kim Brown a Volvo. He bought Jewel a Volvo. He bought, it's another guy that used to be on the dream team, the death row team. Um, he bought him a Mercedes Benz because he said he was responsible for pulling in the money. And he bought me a Ford um, Taurus that just busted out in the blaze one day. She went and told him that I didn't like the car. Now, mind you, the car that I was driving was way worse than the Taurus, so I appreciated it, what he had did. This was our Christmas gift. But what I didn't know is he held the title to all the cars. So when he wanted the car back, he just, hey, I own that car. I'm going to get it. So he did some real punk ass shit. And I still I have forgiven him for everything he did, but I haven't forgot. I will never forget. Every day. Every day, it's, it's a reminder that what he has done to me is a permanent in, 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 injury, and it's really sad. The one, see, when, they, when, when you go to Death Row Records, when people would go to Death Row Records, it would be so many bloods up in there. You ain't doing nothing that you ain't got no business doing. But should off off that pop, off that property in Westwood, anything was fair 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 grounds. Now I wasn't there when David Ruffin got beat up, but David Ruffin got beat up. David Ruffin? You know who David Ruffin? David Ruffin is the son of David Ruffin from The Temptations. Oh, so David Ruffin Jr. got beat up. David Ruffin Jr. got beat up, and he is the reason why we were all at death row records. That's how we all got in by David meeting them in the men's bathroom. But see, David wrote the gin and juice hook. Now we know gin and juice, that hook sold a lot of records and David might be just starting to get his money. He might, and he might not have gotten any, I don't know, but he wrote that hook. And my ex played the bass on most of the stuff that came out of there after the other guy was gone. The guy that my husband, my ex replaced was on bass too. But we brought Lauren Lake from Paternity Court. We brought David Ruffin Jr. And we brought uh, Ricky Rouse. Tony Green brought most of the Detroit clan that came into death row. That's why the music was so had that soulful R&B feel to it because all you got to do is have your right samples going and the right musicians going and you blend them two together you got yourself a hit ain't hard to make another hit out of a hit you know what I'm saying if it was a hit already it, it, will, it will be a hit but did I see other people get beat down no I did not but I did I did I the Madeline Woods incident that 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 was real that was a real incident. And that same night, that same night, they had a party at a place in Miami in, in Orlando that had one way in and one way out. And when I got to that place, I took a cab there. The cab cost like $25, $30. And when I saw it only had one way in and one way out, I got back in the cab and went back to the hotel and all hell broke out. Everybody went to jail except for me and my nephew. Everybody else went to jail. They had to call to get bail money for Suge to bail everybody out. I cannot remember the basketball player's name. But yes, it, it, death row was an experience.